These are all statements. And not only have they lied the whole time, they're constantly changing the goalpost and constantly changing their stories and then making fun of us when when we've never seen buildings do this in history, when you got firemen and police saying, get back, they're going to blow it up, when you have the PNAC document saying we need to have a giant Pearl Harbor, 3,000 dead, level event, we've got lying about the WMDs, we've got Cheney wanting to blow up ships th three years ago and blame it on the Iranians, that's now public, Fox Fowl and their admiral resigning, uh, we've got Gulf of Tonkin, all these other events, I mean, you'd have to be insane not to know that every arrow, every dotted line, everything aims at inside job. I mean, I wish it wasn't an inside job. I wish that I didn't have to go up against these people. I know you were doing other things and already acclaimed before you got involved in this. Worldwide as a best-selling author and researcher and lecturer and theologian. I mean, it's just conscience demands that they're saying the earth is flat. We have to say it's round. And I know that's a bit of a rant there, but what's your thoughts on the statement I just made? Well, I, I, I agree. And, and let me go back to this point about uh, the physical impossibility of this. You know, our most uh, vicious criticisms have come from the left. People such as George Monbiot, people such as uh, Alexander Coburn, and those two in particular have accused us of believing in magic. Well, what I just described to you about uh, the official report on Building 7 is magic. Uh, for a building to come down without the ex uh, steel being removed by explosives in absolute freefall, meaning there was zero resistance, that's magic. That's a miracle. And as I point out in the book, it is not allowed in science. One of the reasons this is an unscientific report, it is not allowed in science to appeal to a miracle. You can't, you know, you know the joke about the, the guy up on the blackboard, the physicist. He's got all these formula covering pay, uh, board after board after board, and then at the very bottom it says, and then a miracle occurs. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't do that. But that is what NIST did. They gave us 600 pages, 600 and some pages of graphs and explanations and uh, arguments and so on. And then in the final pages, they say, well, then a miracle occurred. Uh, the building came down in absolute freedom. But you're fall. talking about seven, three miracles occurred that day. Yeah, now they haven't admitted that the Twin Towers uh, came down in absolute freefall. I think... I think if somebody went back and uh, measured those the way that uh, Chandler did, I don't, I don't know that somebody has. Now, maybe somebody has, but I haven't seen it. Uh, maybe there would be a period there, uh, a few seconds, where they're coming down in absolute free fall, too. Uh, that'd be important to find out. But if even one of them is, uh, you know, and it would still be a miracle if they were just coming down in virtual free fall. You can't even come close to free fall. Oh, without explosives. Now they've done uh, the calculations. Pardon? I mean, well, you and others and, and physicists and engineers have done the, the, the calculations with the pancake. I mean, there's a major pause between each pancake and each structural failure. That's right. If you, if you had, but, but NIST gave up the pancake theory, uh, later on. Uh, although that's complex because there are different meanings of the pancake theory. They gave up the theory that uh, the fellow from MIT um, had had articulated, but they still have an element of that, and that's the point. There should have been a delay, and uh, there is a very good paper uh, by uh, McQueen and uh, 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 somebody on uh, the Journal of 9-11 Studies showing that with regard to the towers, with the South Tower, this idea that the, the top part came down and banged into the lower part, there would have had to be a jolt, which would have been that delay you're talking about. Okay. And uh, there was no jolt. David, so, I, want to throw again, out, I want to throw in a few other points before you have to leave us here in about 10 minutes. I, want, I know you've been talking to Charlie Sheen because uh, he's told me about it, and he is a guy making $50 million a year. He's got his own wife. 
He is a scholarly fellow, despite the tabloid stuff from 10, 15 years ago. He really has researched all this. He's fundamentally upset about it. He wrote his 20 bullet points and put it in a question and answer format to try to get media attention. And obviously they'll never address his 20 points. They only want to attack him, the man. Overall, uh, what did you think about uh, Charlie Sheen and his going public again? Well, I think it's great, and it was, it was paralleled in France uh, with this uh, famous French comedian, Jean-Marie Bigard. He's the top comedian. Uh, the top comedian in France. He gets thousands of people showing up for his shows, and uh, they did. And uh, they did threaten him at first and said, "You know, you're going to it's going to destroy your career and all that." He did go quiet for a while, but he finally decided, "Look, this is just too important. If it hurts my career, so be it." And he's now making these really hilarious uh, DVDs, little videos about various parts of the official story. So, um, but, you know, this, this shows you, uh, even with people of the stature of the guard, and now in France, another fellow, uh, Matthew uh, Kosovitz, a uh, well-known actor over there coming out, and Charlie Sheen over here, along with uh, Daniel Sunjata, um, the media is not going to deal with it, no matter what. Even if we, you know, even if we have celebrities involved, and so we can no longer uh, rely on them. And you've known this for a long time, of course. But the truth movement, in general, now needs to take an end run around them, not rely on them to educate the American people. I agree with you. Stay directly. there, David. David, we got to go to break, but. I've talked to these actors. They're not doing this for attention. This hurts their career in many respects. They're doing it because they want to show the courage to other people. They they understand it's a crime. You can't just let it hang out there. Their conscience is 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 demanding they stand up. So I salute all of them.